Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board meeting for Monday, October 28, 2019. Um, I am Diana Mahan, Chair of the Select Board, and to my right. John Hurd. Joe Curo. Dan Dunn. Steve DeCourcy. Adam Chaplain, Town Manager. Doug Heim, Town Council. Marie Propalco, Board Administrator. Thank you. Uh, first item on our agenda, I will turn over to um, our town manager to introduce our acting assistant town manager, Mr. Chapterline. Thank you, Madam Chair. So as the board knows, uh, Jim Feeney, uh, the assistant town manager, is serving in an interim capacity as facilities director, likely from now uh, until the better part or through town meeting of next year. So we brought on uh, an acting assistant town manager to fill in for Jim's responsibilities while he was working over in facilities. That person is Ray Santilli. He's here tonight. Uh, Ray worked for 17 years as the assistant town manager in North Andover. Before that, for the city of Cambridge uh, in their police department's business office. And he retired what, just about a year ago? Yes, uh, 13 and, months. <laughs> and he's now been with us for the past two months uh, filling in Jim's shoes and doing a great job at it. So we wanted the board to have a chance to meet him, say hello, and ask any questions they might have. Okay. Good um, evening. Good evening. Um, anything you want to add to that before? <laughs> okay. I'll answer any questions. Okay. I, I do officially want to say welcome. Um, fortunately or unfortunately for you, I, we've uh, met a few times, um, and you, you fit right into uh, the manager's office, and you are, I can tell just from observing, not working on anything together with you, um, you're definitely the right person to have that I see no learning curve or, you know, you're, you're right there knowing what needs to be done as well as, you know, balancing working out of the town manager's office. And um, from the fellow staff down there, um, I've heard nothing but great remarks and, and they really enjoy working with you. They might be getting too attached. No. <laughs> but that's an issue for another day and I really do appreciate you um, coming in because this was really important to the select board in terms of um, when we had the manager really get a lot um, on his plate. Um, um, we almost lost him. And, and one of the reasons was, you know, he wasn't saying no to anything and because he wanted to do everything, which he can, but then it really takes out outside. And we had the same concern with Jim Feeney because he's fantastic at whatever he does and he says yes to everything. Um, so when Adam mentioned um, that, you know, he was looking at hiring you and your credentials and qualifications, I was so thrilled and and that thrill carries through in meeting you and, and seeing you about three or four t times now, really just fitting in on the team. So I thank you so much for helping us for however long that is. Okay, uh, any questions? No? If, Welcome. Thank you. I was gonna say, if, if Mr. Grilly was here, he'd say, who's your favorite select board member? But I won't ask you that. And, and I'm fond of saying I have five favorite select board members. Yeah, <laughs> see what I tell you. Yeah, well, town. All right. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Uh, second agenda item is uh, introduction from the U.S. State Department Young Southeast Asian Leadership Initiative Fellows, Dwai Jayanthi, Jayanthi, Jayanthi and Jolly Noon. And now you guys pull the mic down and tell me how I should have said your names, and I apologize. So, uh, can I introduce them? Is oh, that, yes, is, sure. is that, is that Oh, okay? I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Chaplain. So, no, no. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, I want to say that I, Arlington, we're, we're here in Arlington, we're pleased to welcome these two young professionals from Southeast Asia, uh, Dewey Gianti and Jolly Wen, for a month-long fellowship in sustainable international development. Over the next four weeks, Dewey and Jolly will be visiting local and state government officials, nonprofit organizations, residents, students, and environmental leaders. We are excited, and I believe that they're excited, about the professional and cultural exchange of ideas nurtured by this program. Dewey and Jolly are particularly interested in the reduction of single-use plastics, both at a policy and social level, which is a topic of our local government that we've weighed in on and continue to encourage through the leadership of our Zero Waste Committee. Jolly is the founder of a social enterprise called Education for Vietnam Organic Lifestyle. Her organization focuses on youth empowerment and environmental issues through organic farming and community projects. EVOL, as it's called, has cooperated with other nonprofits, NGOs, international organizations, and government entities to promote organic farming in urban areas and to raise awareness of environmental problems. Dewey's interest, uh, interest is in the intersection of environmental issues and journalism, and that led to a 2017 fellowship in Fiji with climatetracker.org 
a youth journalism organization for climate change. In 2018, Dewey served as a delegate at the YSEALI Marine Debris Expedition in Indonesia. Dewey currently works as a coordinator for the Indonesian campaign Plastic Detox, which seeks to reward small businesses in Bali that are genuinely committed to stop, stopping or reducing substantially their use of plastic bags. So we're very happy to have them here. Charlotte Milan is their host. No, and we just wanted great. a chance for them to meet the board and for the board to say hello. Uh, Dewey or Jolly, who wants to go first? Let me introduce myself. My name is Dewey. How are you? Yes, uh, thank you for having us today. Uh, my name is Jolly, and I'm from Vietnam. Yes. Um, any questions from the board, Mr. Hurd, and then Mr. Kira? Just say briefly that I got an opportunity earlier this week to meet Dewey and Jolly, and within talking with them for a few, just a few minutes, it was clear that there was a lot that they came here that we can learn from them and I'm happy to be hosting. I know you guys have full plates and I look forward to having conversations about, about what you guys can offer us and ideas that we can offer you guys in exchange. And how was New York? Well, you know what? How was yeah. New Did you guys go to New York this weekend? Yes, yeah, so far so good. That's, uh, we have a chance, just a short trip to New York, but you know, she's totally different from Arlington. We, tall oh, buildings, right. and, yeah, so, <laughs> yes, yeah. Mr. Carroll. So well, I also had a chance to meet Dewey and Jolly, and we had a great conversation as well. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> we had a, a great conversation about some of the work that you've been doing um, you. in your home countries. And I know one of the things we talked about is some of the, the, the um, education that has to be done with, you know, you, you, you talked a little <coughs> bit um, right. about uh, education you've done with small businesses in trying to reduce uh, some of the plastic use. I don't know if you wanted to say a few words about, about some of your experience there. Yeah. So in my country in Indonesia, I especially encourage the small businesses to reduce single-use plastic, and we give them incentive, such as uh, training to their staff how to communicate to their customer, because the business is doing the green mm -hmm. business to reducing single-use plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I think, Jolly, I think you were working with the youth, I, I believe. Is that, yes. That's correct. Yeah. 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 So thank you very um, much. You're welcome. My question is, um, I know you're meeting with various groups, and one was cited as was Arlington Businesses. When you're meeting with them, is it um, under the spectrum of looking at plastic uses um, in anything else, or just generally around that? Yeah, uh, we, uh, uh, for me, as a plastic detox coordinators, we meet the owners and the managers. We talk about how they can <coughs> reduce only three items of single-use plastic. The three items are plastic straws, plastic bag, and also styrofoam, only that. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. uh, particularly for me, that uh, besides raise awareness of uh, urban people around, about uh, single plastic, use, that also that we try to find the alternative materials to use, such as now I focus on loofah, yeah, to, be, to use that material to make the products, so we can replace somehow with the plastic single use, yeah, that's what I'm doing now, yeah. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll take a motion to move receipt. So moved. By Mr. Dunn, seconded okay. by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so nice much. You yes. uh, uh, consent agenda, minutes of meeting, September 9, 2019, October 7, 2019. Request permit for Veterans Day, Monday, November 11th. Jeffrey A. Chunglo, Director of Veterans Services for approval, Kino license, Arlington American Legion, post 39, 307 Mass Ave. Reappointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, Patrick Quinn, term to expire 10-122. Christian Klein, <coughs> term to expire 10-122. Request special one-day all-alcohol license, November 1st, 2019. Robbins Memorial Town Hall for AYCC Gala Fundraiser. Colleen Leisure, Leaguer, Arlington Youth Cons Counseling Services. Request special one-day beer and wine license, November 9th, 2019. Wa Whittemore Robbins House for a private event. Pamela Price and request special one-day beer and wine license, November 23rd, 2019 at Arlington Catholic High School for the second annual Rinaldi fundraiser, William Callahan. First, is there a motion? 
So moved. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Is there anyone here on any of those um, agenda items? AYCC or? I, I see Mr. Klein in the audience. Oh, is Mr. Klein here? Hey, how are you? You want to just, don't you don't need to? Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, all our volunteers. Yes. Returning for another term. With the big M before us. <laughs> um, that's Mugar. I'm not trying to be secretive. Sorry. <laughs> We have a 715 public hearing, and it's now 725, Eversource Petition, Summer Street, Jackie Duffy, Supervisors, Rights, and Permits. Just name and position for the record. Jackie Duffy, Eversource, would like to install 72 feet of conduit on Summer Street, Arlington, to provide electric service to 483 Summer Street. Okay. Um, is, are there any neighbors or anyone here for the public hearing? Is there a motion from any of my colleagues? Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Moved by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Second. Mr. DeCourcy. Um, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank Good you. Good to see you, Jackie. And I just want to say, while you're here, um, as the entire select board knows, you have, over the years, been so helpful to the town of Arlington during major outages townwide and sometimes just single streets or single households um, and you do it and move on and um, I think you're sort of one of the unsung heroes especially well, around Eversource so uh, I do appreciate everything you, we we appreciate it you're and you're welcome to say the rest of the meeting <laughs> um, agenda item 11 licenses and permits for approval all alcohol package store BB Liquors, Pat Nilesh Patel, owner, and we have Learned Council, Attorney Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. Attorney O'Connor. Good evening, uh, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. Uh, last we were here, you had asked for a, a more refined and revised interior floor plan, which we provided, as well as the facade that um, Mr. Patel is proposing for the premises. Also uh, at issue was Mr. Byrne's comments um, from inspectional services. Um, Mr. Byrne agrees with me that no special permit uh, is required here because this is another retail type use. With respect to the parking, though there have been, they have parked four spaces, four cars behind this establishment on the lot for probably 25 or 35 years, those spaces are not legal spaces in accordance with the zoning bylaw. We could, uh, he can only get one legal space there because of the buffer zones and things that you need. Um, I, would, I know that you have a, a, a policy about two spaces, but I would suggest to you the following. This location is very different than uh, several of the other stores that you've permitted. Um, if you take Prime, um, Giles, and Monotomy, there's a lot of activity around those sites. You have Stop and Shop, you have what's going on in the Heights, um, parking was fairly essential. If you look at this location, um, and I get my coffee at the Dunkin' Donuts there all the time across the street, there are never any cars along that section of 1215 Mass Ave. There are no other businesses in that area, so there's no competition for parking. This was <coughs> a fast food establishment for, oh, Diane, you may recall better than I, and, and Jack, I don't, I don't remember for how long, maybe 35, 40 years. Um, it's not really a, a change in, in use, it's just a different retail use. The other important point is that this, w this building has sat vacant for a period of time, and Mr. Patel is going to make a substantial investment uh, in redoing this building and uh, making the uh, facade attractive. Uh, the other thing is it puts a full-service all-alcoholic beverage store up towards the heights, where there isn't one right now. Um, and I think that's a service to the people in that area. So I would urge approval of this. I don't know that you want me to repeat what we said at the last hearing. The board has already taken that testimony. But if you have any questions. Okay. Are there any questions? Um, I will just for um, history's sake, when the board first started granting the first three all alcohol um, package stores, um, one of the sort of tenants that we put out our understanding was that we really wanted to see that parking was included. Um, and that's when we were first starting out. 
because a lot of um, businesses and residents who lived on, on Mass Avenue were concerned where these were brand new and probably a lot of people would be coming, which we want because we want our businesses to be successful. Um, that was sort of one of the things that made the cut for <coughs> first three and the um, next two. Having said that, um, I'm in no way, I'm just saying that's where we started out, but that was many years ago. It may not be something that is as important to the board right now, that um, there is identified um, off-street parking. Um, so, and I'm, I'm happy to be guided by my colleagues, uh, but I just wanted to let you know where the parking, you know, because I had spoken with uh, Michael Byrne, as you have, um, the building inspector, and that's also his memory. Um, but I'm saying the way we did it initially 15 years ago, whenever we started this, we may be in a new day and age, or we may not. The, you know, this current board may feel that um, we do want to um, place some number of parking as part of the application approval. So um, I'll go to my colleagues, Mr. Hurd. I just say parking for businesses in Arlington overall is scarce. So I think this location has been searching for the right tenant for years. And I think in this particular location, it can operate with the parking that's afforded on the premises. And I think this is a good use of the property. Okay. Mr. Carroll? And my question is, do you have a sense of how many uh, vehicles could park in front of it? Four along the street. Yeah. Yeah, that side of the street is always empty if you drive no, by and notice. No, I know, I know, yeah. I know. Just, just to put it out there. So, I mean, I, I feel pretty comfortable, too, I mean, given the nature of that, that area. It, it's not as, as busy and congested. It's not like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. DeBose. Yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Carr. It's... When I look at Giles, and I don't know what the conditions were when it received its, its, its permit, but that all the parking for Giles is in, isn't, well, no one knows it's in the oh, back. I didn't know. Because well, just, I, I, if we go there, we're parking on the street or people walking there from the neighborhood. So I see at least as many spots here in front of your um, proposed store. And, and I know along the side, um, there may be parking as well on the street. So um, I think where we are, that, that, that isn't really a concern for me. And um, I'm blanking right now. The uh, side street that it abuts, that's a public way? Clark Street. Clark Street. Is that public or private? Private. It is private. But you okay. own the house, don't you, on that street? Yeah. He owns a piece of pro a house. So the then house. you can do that. I, I just wanted to make you aware that, you know, there's one benefit, if you want to call it a benefit, to a private way that sometimes people will say, um, that spot in front of my house belongs to me. But oh, no, you I already don't have. Own that on the flag. I own the next to the. Okay. One, two, one, five, five, right. seven, two, one, two. Oh. There we are parking in my property. Okay. And then um, just if you could refresh my memory, because I believe you have a similar business in Stoneham. Yes. Um, who will be, what person or persons will be the Monday through Sunday manager? Right now, I am thinking going to be me, and I'm going to put my another brother in stone. But I am waiting for this thing. We say it's done, then we're going to decide who's going to One of my brothers going to be here or there. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, is there a motion? Mr. Uh, do you want a motion or a couple questions? Oh, quite. Give Mr. Don, questions. Um, actually, I guess there are probably more comments. Um, one is so we talked uh, already last time about uh, the importance of training for people to even and especially the new people, which yes. is where I'm. Put that, yeah, I'm not worried about the people you open with on day one. I'm worried about the people who come in when the people on day one quit event or, or you know when there's turnover. That's what I'm worried about. The training for the people who turn over. That's the most important training. Um, and my second comment is just a. Uh, I do like the the new facade, and I think that the um, uh, the upkeep of that is is in, in keeping it in up like as it looks is really important. And I think that if we look at examples uh, in Arlington, that uh, for instance, uh, like I think everybody who is currently in a liquor store is doing a good job of it, but clearly the previous owner on Summer Street was not for a period of time, and. Uh, I would have, you know, if they hadn't managed to sell, I was going to be trying to remove their license in the subsequent December. So my thought is keep, 
keep the facade. I, I like the design. Okay. Keep it. Keep it up. Uh, well kept. Okay. Thank you. I, yep. I just want to point out that that facade has to go in front of the ARB. So. I, I, okay. I thank you for okay. the clarification. But I, the intent is there, and I like the intent. Um, will you be selling nips? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll leave it to you with your maintenance plan. Unfortunately, those traditionally seem to be the ones that sometimes land right outside of our package doors, uh, especially down at Summer Street. That was one of the main concerns, you know, on your way to the high school and on the bike path. Um, so I would ask you, it's your business for you to run. If you see NIPS is, are not really that viable, you know, because I mean, anywhere in Arlington you can say some school children could possibly um, pass, um, and this being near the Audison, but if you could be really vigilant in terms of outside just your store, I'm not asking you to go streets over or anything like that, um, that would be appreciated. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. Is there a motion? Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. By Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Anyone else? If not, um, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous <coughs> vote. I want to thank you, Attorney Winston Lee O'Connor, for and, and your client, but also thank you for uh, walking through this with us and, and getting thank us you. all the documents. And um, I know you put a lot of time and work on this. Um, thank you. The board's consideration. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Good luck. Uh, agenda item 12. Um, we have a response to the petitions we received at our last meeting um, from our town manager, Mr. Chapterling. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that you've allowed me an opportunity to speak in regard to this matter tonight. I'd like to start by thanking all of the residents that have attended the last few board meetings to express their concern regarding this issue. Their presence and their words have allowed all of us to learn and more deeply understand the contours of this issue. Through the words of those who have spoken to the board and through the many meetings that I have had with residents in regard to this matter over the past six months, I have felt the pain that many are feeling and have deepened my understanding of the importance of constantly working to build and maintain trust between town government and the community. I also want to note the respect and appreciation that I have for the women and men of the Arlington Police Department. They work hard to serve this community, and I'll be the first one to acknowledge the difficulty of their jobs. Though this issue has highlighted areas that we need to focus on and implement improvements, I do not feel that a blanket indictment of the APD is appropriate, and it's certainly not what I am intending to do. Before directly addressing the petition and my responses to it, I do want to make something clear that I should have made clear in my letter to the community back in the summer. Lieutenant Pedrini's writings were racist and need to be called out as such. I want to be additionally clear. I am not saying that Rick Pedrini is a racist, but I do believe that his words were. Though I have in the past and continue now to condemn his writings, I don't call them racist tonight simply to condemn them. Rather, I make that statement to call them what they are so that we can address the issue that is before us. The more I read and learn about issues of race in this country, the more I understand that it is a challenge that we all face. Bias, either implicit or explicit, is present in all of us, and it is only through an acknowledgement of its presence that we can begin to address, address it and find ways to move past it as individuals, organizations, and as a society. I'm hopeful that working together as a community, we can begin to address these issues and improve the overall equity and inclusion of Arlington as both a local government and a community. In order to start this work, I'd like to directly respond to the petition and also offer an additional step that we're committed to taking in response to this issue. So the first request of the petition was for the town to develop and announce a plan for repairing community trust by November 1st of 2019. Using the report compiled by the Consensus Building Institute, or CBI, we plan to hold a series of community meetings in order to develop and continue the restorative process for Lieutenant Pedrini with the community and targeted groups. I've spoken with one facilitator and would like to speak to a few more before formally announcing the format of these meetings. Currently, I'd like to try to have the first of these meetings scheduled to be held before the end of November. Additionally, 
in line with CBI's recommendation to develop additional structures, policies, and actions for the town to ensure that Arlington and its employees live up to the values and aspirations of Arlington residents, we are planning to update the town's employee handbook so that it includes a code of conduct. The next request of the petition was to restrict Lieutenant Pedrini to desk duty while this plan is being developed. Chief Flaherty holds the right of assignment for police personnel, but we have both agreed that due to the sensitivity of this matter, that we will confer before any changes to Lieutenant Pedrini's assignment, uh, assignment is made. Correspondingly, we are both in agreement that Lieutenant Pedrini will remain in his current administrative assignment until further notice. If at some future point we decide to change his assignment, we commit to doing so transparently. The third request of the petition is to work with an impartial, racially diverse, third-party organization to conduct a review of the APD and assess the presence of bias within the department. We are committed to doing this, and Chief Flaherty has two proposals from two different firms that we are now assessing. We hope to have a firm selected and a contract awarded within the next two weeks. The fourth request is that based on the assessment findings and third-party recommendations, we develop a plan for ongoing cultural competency and anti-racism training within the APD. We are absolutely committed to doing this as it is both appropriate and also a continuation of trainings that former Chief Ryan and now Acting Chief Flaherty have conducted for the department. And finally, the petition requests that we develop a plan for the establishment of a racially and class diverse civilian review board. In regard to this, I'd say it's my opinion that it's generally not the town manager who tells a community how to govern itself from a structural point of view. That said, I'd be very happy to facilitate a process of considering such a proposal if it's brought forth by the community. Finally, though it doesn't directly relate to any of the requests of the petition, I am working to bring the National League of Cities Race, Equity, and Leadership Division to Arlington. This engagement would include assessment, training, and capacity building. It would focus on work with department heads, supervisory staff, and elected officials. The National League of Cities created the Race, Equity, and Leadership Division to strengthen local government leaders' knowledge and capacity to eliminate racial disparities, heal racial divisions, and build more equitable communities. In closing, I'm fully aware that just making this statement tonight does not or will not fully satisfy people's concerns. Moreover, I understand that there are many different opinions, including sometimes conflicting opinions, about what should be done to address people's concerns. That notwithstanding, I also fully understand that we need to act upon the responses that I have offered tonight and that we need to do so in an expeditious yet thoughtful manner. I am committed to doing so. As more uh, details about our plans are developed, I will share them with the community, and I look forward to working with the board and the community, not to no longer talk about this issue, but to look back and see the improvements that we've made. Thank you. Thank you, and um, I do wanna say, <clears throat> working with the town manager for the past two, two and a half months now from the initial um, select board meeting, um, hearing what I heard, um, over those three meetings, I did have the opportunity to meet with Ms. Dre, um, who also, you know, I, I made it very clear that I, you know, wanted to sit and listen and hear um, what the requests were and, and suggestions were, uh, and took those all very seriously, as, as the entire board does, um, as well as with anything else. Um, I'm not the person with the most knowledge or expertise on this. You know, is there anything in addition? Um, that we should start to do. And, and I see this as you know, a plan being put into place evolving. Um, it's not just a one hit wonder or anything like that. Um, I did feel um, from the remarks and um, meeting with Ms. Dre that you know, this isn't just an APD um, issue or if you, to, to, to talk about, it's a community issue and it's whether it's you know, a department heads, town employees, um, elected officials, I felt it was important. Um, I really try to keep the separation of, you know, legislative and executive branch of um, the town of Arlington, but I really feel, and, and I know my colleagues agree, that, you know, on an important community issue, we sort of kind of put all those hats aside and, and, and dig in together, whether it's going for a high school rebuild or whether it's helping out, and this certainly is a serious community issue um, that 
we're treating, I think, respectfully and seriously. And I'll be the first one to say we may implement these steps and there may be more that we need to do. Or we may find when we bring out some facilitators um, or hear some testimony from the community or others that there's something else we may want to consider. Um, so uh, I'm not saying anything is closed, but um, really took to point um, what we heard, we all did, what was the request in the petitions, individual conversations, either that I only spoke with Ms. Dre, and I apologize for anyone else, but my colleagues have sat and met with other members, um, and they've relayed to myself and our, my colleagues sort of um, who they met with, what they felt the concerns were. And I think a big piece here that I hope we're addressing is um, people can come forward and say things and we may not hear them the right way, so I wanted to keep that mindset on. And I, I really did strive along with my colleagues just to sit and listen and t take copious notes um, of what I was hearing. And basically, over the past eight weeks, I don't know how many times I've been in Mr. Chapdelaine's office, just relayed that back to him. And what I've said to him is, <clears throat> I'm just a member of the board. You're the town manager. I did say you get paid the big bucks for this. <laughs> you know, here's what I'm hearing um, along with the petition um, and, and things were evolving and if there's anything else above and beyond, and I'm not short-sighting the petition in any way whatsoever, but as we go through this journey and, and gain knowledge on it, that's where we're coming upon some of these other things. So um, I wanna thank the town manager for such a concise um, plan to work with the community, with our employees, our department heads, and our elected officials. Um, and uh, I really, even though this was, some may say, a long process, um, it was a process that needed to happen. Uh, and I think first and foremost, we needed to listen. And um, sometimes I had people come up to me and have conversations on the street, and I would say, well, you know what? It's not what's happening, it's what people are experiencing. And you know, I've, I've had kids, and I've seen one incident happened and I've gotten three different stories and they all said that's what happened and you know and they believed it and that's how they feel. You need to take the words um, and I hope we've done that and we will continue to do that and so again I want to thank Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, I guess first just to, is there a motion to receive? So moved. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded Second. by Mr. Kiro. Uh, any questions or comments from my colleagues? Mr. Dunn? Um, I thought it was very thoughtful, and um, I think it included a lot of the feedback that um, we've heard over the last few months. And, and I know I've, I've sat down with Adam a couple different times and talked about, and we've chewed through some of the right ways that we can, uh, that we can process in, in this issue, and I, th I think that you, you got a lot of them in there, and I think I, I really like that. Um, I also really like the fact that it um, embraces multiple different communities that need to be uh, worked with, uh, so including uh, the you know residents of town and town employees and our police department and how they're all in different places with different needs and you've got different elements for each of those and I think that that's a really like that's a very strong element of what you're describing, and uh, I also think that uh, I know you know this it, it is it, this isn't. Um, and you say it, that this is part of a long-running program. This isn't something that we, you know, we do it for a month and then we're done. This is, you know, we're going to be doing this or what builds from, we're going to do what builds from this forever. And uh, I think acknowledging that and put, keeping that perspective is really important. So thank you. Mr. Kiro, and then Mr. Hart. Thank you. Um, there's, there's no doubt that on the seven and a half years that I've, been on this board. This has been probably the most difficult conversation that we've we've um, had, I think. Um, um, and I, I'm going to venture to say that's probably just about the most difficult that that you've probably okay. dealt with in Absolutely. your uh, eight years as uh, as as um, manager. Um, so I, I want to you know echo my colleagues and thanking you for listening to the community because I know how many people we've heard from, I, I'm gonna to venture to guess that you've heard from exponentially more voices and a lot of different voices. Um, you know, and I, it strikes me that even, you know, I think <clears throat> you know, we, 
we have to thank those members of the community who shared some of their experiences too, in some cases personal experiences, or what actually triggers them directly about the, this, um, what was written in this, this incident and, and, and such, or the, about the communities that they work with, um, you know, personally or, or, um, or professionally. So, I mean, I see this as, 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 a, be as a beginning, because there's a, you know, you listed out, I think, I, I, I really commend you for going through each point that was raised in the um, community petition and, and uh, addressing it, and also brainstorming and some additional steps. But of course, behind every one of these, there's a lot of work that, that's going to have to be done going, going forward. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Diversity Task Group is, is sponsoring a community listening session on November 17th. I and right. and um, I think that that's intended to be a, an opportunity for people in the community to hear directly from some impacted groups, not specifically about this matter, just about their life experience <coughs> in the community and, and um, whether they're feeling um, uh, racism or, or, or whatnot in, in different aspects of their lives. And I think that those types of community conversations are going to be important. So I really appreciate those that, that, that you and the chief and other members of, of uh, the, the staff and, and leadership of the town and leadership of the community are going to be facilitating um, going forward. We've got a lot of work uh, ahead of us, but, um, you know, Thank you to you and for all of the voices. I think that some of the some of the very personal nature of uh, some of the testimony was um, pretty brave. So, thank you. Mr. Hurd, just want to start by thanking the town manager for that update and for all the work that you've put in. I know you've taken this matter very seriously and put the utmost consideration to every step and every decision you made along this process. Um, I want to thank the petitioners and all the residents that have come up and kept this issue at the forefront, made sure that both the town administration and this board are held accountable, and we know just how deeply these writings have affected members of this community in a negative way, and how we have to make sure that that is, you know, a consideration in every single aspect of this process. I, as board members have mentioned, have met, met with a number of residents over the past couple of weeks, um, and a lot of the issues that we've discussed, they've all been positive discussions. They're all how we move forward, how we help the healing process as best as possible. And a lot of the concerns that I've discussed with residents have been covered by the town manager's response, so I thank you for that. I think it's clear we're not gonna make everybody whole at the end of this process. Not everyone's gonna be happy with the decisions we make, but I think we are, engaging in a process we're getting to the next step where we can really see some healing and get the community together i think it's a learning experience we can learn from the process and come together and have a positive discussion with residents that will help those that were victimized by lieutenant Padrini's writings those who were harmed by lieutenant Padrini's writing and i also find this as see this as a turning point to help the men and women of the apd who also have had a difficult experience going through. You know, we have a police, take out this one matter and we have a police department that's always been a shining beacon of how a police department should act and they continue to act under Chief Ryan and now under Chief Flaherty. And I think with them involved and as we go through this process, it will help the men and women of the APD to get through the process as well. So I see this as positive. I think one of the main tenets that all that are listening need to understand is that this process will last as long as it needs to in order to find some healing in the community and get a resolution that makes residents feel comfortable with. Thank you. Mr. DeVos. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chapdelain, for, for your comments this evening. We've had discussions about this previously, and we talked about needing a path forward and you've laid out what that path forward is going to be and it, it is just the beginning and there is a lot of work to be done as as you've said and, and fellow members have have echoed but i think it, it was an important next step that you took this evening 
for the community. And we talked to a number of, of citizens, a number of people who were affected by Lep Lieutenant Pedrini's words, um, people here tonight, people in the community, people on the Arlington Police Department who they, they, we talked to different members um, or did, I, I have people who have been, they have been affected by these words. And, and so when we're talking about moving forward, we're talking about moving forward as a community, um, both with the people who are harmed, who, who we spoke to, residents of the town and, and our police department. And, and you know, we need to support everyone as, as, as we go forward uh, with that. And it's gonna be difficult that there's a lot of challenges ahead, but I think you recognize that and, and I appreciate all the steps you've taken. And as Mr. Dunn said, there, there are different areas um, that, that you've highlighted there. And um, you know, as we go forward, I think it's, it's more important to be thoughtful about this and make sure we're doing it right as opposed to just doing things as of certain dates because this isn't a time um, type situation. This is, we need to move forward as a community and if it doesn't happen by November 1st, but we move forward by December 15th, that's fine. And, and, and so um, you know, we, we look forward to, to hearing more from you and, and to working together with you and the community on this. Okay, thank you. And, and I, I just want to reiterate um, before, she probably doesn't realize I'm gonna ask her, but um, um, this really is a community discussion that needs to be had. Um, and hearing from residents, um, I like to think if it doesn't start with the, the elected officials, this board certainly um, plays a role in that and it's part of that community, which is why um, it's not just directed, some of the steps are directly to APD, but the community and, and conversations that need to happen and um, things all sides need to hear, basically um, it starts with us up here on the select board, which is why um, it's not just APD, it's not just department heads, um, it also needs and should be um, elected officials. So even if we didn't have a seat per, seat per se at the table, undoubtedly we all would be there anyways. But I think it's an important statement to the community that um, you know, starting with this board um, through the town manager and, and hearing from everybody that we are gonna embrace this as a community issue that needs to have continued ongoing discussion and do it in the most productive, positive way because I'm, I'm not the person, you know, that really has any business doing that. Um, I, I've tried my best and um, my apologies to people who haven't felt that way and I, I totally understand that. Um, and a little bit going off the agenda but just because this has been uh, a process that I think is moving forward in a positive way. If, Ms. Dre, do you have anything that you would like to say? Um, sure, and yeah. I do sign up until a comment if you prefer to have me speak then, I'm happy to speak now. Um, you want to speak now instead of then? Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Elizabeth Dre on Jason Street. Um, Adam, I want to say a sincere thank you for um, some very brave and important things that you said tonight. Um, first among them is to publicly call um, Lieutenant Pedrini's words racist. Um, second is to publicly thank those of us who have put timeless hours um, and um, into this and have, uh, and to the people who have been brave enough to come forward and speak their truth to the public, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, we have been painted as troublemakers and divisive, and hopefully with your words and the words of other um, board members who also thanked people for their courage to come forward, that we can put that behind us because really to get through and do the work that you have outlined um, is gonna take a group effort and it's gonna take a lot of time and it's gonna take um, a lot of transparency and a lot of working together and hearing each other. So thank you for that. I also want to say that I'm really pleased to have you here the word series of community events, of community, because I think one, you know, I hear from a lot of people, well, we'll just do one and it'll be done. 
Um, why do you want more? So the fact that you have heard that um, and have committed to doing a series of community events I think is fantastic. And I know that um, I've had some conversations with um, Mr. Kiro and uh, Diversity Task Force people about you know some ideas. So we look forward to elaborating on those with you. And I hope that as we move forward, you will reach out to those of us in the community to help plan these events. Um, that would, you know, is really, would Absolutely. be really important. Um, I also am pleased that the Arlington Police Department um, can also start to heal as a result of um, the request on the petition being heard. And I, I think that there are probably many police officers who look forward to getting this, you know, looked at and coming out clean and being like, all right, let's move on and get our job done. I know that um, I've met with Chief, Acting Chief Flaherty and um, she has been um, very open to lots of suggestions. So I look forward to, com you know, um, having continuing that relationship. Um, let's see what else I jotted down. I do agree with um, Chairwoman Mahan that we do have a lot of work to do, not just in the APD, but in all parts of Arlington, all aspects of leadership, town governments, and the community. I would really love to see these conversations go out into the community so that we can learn about our own implicit biases, our own, um, you know, cultural biases, our own internal racism, so that we also can learn from this. Um, and I think that that would be a great position. You know, I know there's a new diversity and inclusion person coming on, and I, I'm not sure if that's currently in their, you know, sort of job description, but it would be an interesting idea for that person to sort of be the one who, who moves this ball down the, down the court. Because it is a job, big job, and I'm not sure who will be tasked with doing it. Um, and so I think that's uh, an important thing to consider. Um, again, involving community members as active participants in the ongoing process. Uh, and um, you promised transparency with uh, making the decision process with you and um, acting uh, Chief Flaherty, and we will be holding you to that. Absolutely. Um, and we look forward to being involved in that discussion. So thank you. Thank you for all of you for the hours and hours you have put in it. And I would like to thank all the community who have put hours and hours of work into it and all of the people who came forward and shared their, their truths um, it's a very difficult thing to do, and if people are looking for more information, we have on our website, Arlington Fights Racism, we have uh, action items, other ways to get involved, join our email list, and that way you can work with the town when, when, it, when we get to that step. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This worked out better. I didn't, there's no three minute limit. <laughs> okay. Um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any f further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now come to Citizens Open Forum. Oh, good. We do have people signed up, so I will read the preamble. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Uh, first, we have Bob Radosha. Thank you, uh, Bob Radosha, 45 Columbia Road, Arlington. Uh, I agree with and I support what your plan is to move forward and I hope everything works good and that I don't undermine your efforts by anything I'm gonna say, okay? Um, my, infer my first encounter with the Arlington police was back in the spring of 1943 when I was two and a half and I ran away from home with my dog. <laughs> I was apprehended a half mile from home at the Old Mill restaurant and was returned home safely without being harassed or traumatized. 
For the next 76 years, I've had no reason to fear or disrespect our police. The police take pride in working with the kids of the community and overseeing the well-being of the community. Many Arlington citizens do not agree with the rhetoric we hear during Citizens Open Forum or read in The Advocate that unfairly criticizes the police in general while addressing comments about one officer. When the current police issue was brought up, most people I talk to either shake their head or roll their eyes. So it's, it's not a unanimous thing that we're hearing and seeing and reading. Uh, there is something unusual about the petition that has been circulating with the 1,100 or so signatures. I've never seen a listing of names presented with the names listed alphabetically by first name, Adam through Zeke. It's a strange format, and people question it, and folks that I've talked to say, well, what's that all about? And it basically appears to be, have been a contrived effort to conceal the identity of non-Arlington residents. This is an Arlington issue, and I resent the need to recruit out-of-town people and organizations to get into our business. I did take time to check the list of the 21 uh, in the names that were presented, and I got through about 21 letters of the alphabet that appeared on the petition and found 300 names that did not appear in the 2019 true list of Arlington residents. I estimate a total of about 350 when I finish up the last five letters that I didn't complete. So let, let's not believe that this is an overwhelming majority of our residents who support the police bashing that's taking place. We have many other serious problems, as mentioned, the need in our attention, such as drug abuse, vaping, bullying, depression, alcohol addiction, domestic violence, hateful graffiti, suicides, and other issues that should be our top priority. Let's, let's move on and focus on the important things. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next, I have Lynette Culverhouse. Lynette Culver House, 24 Draper Ave. Um, I want to reiterate what Elizabeth said um, in appreciation of um, Adam's statement and also, um, uh, uh, you know, in past meetings, I felt like I've been pushed away. And the, the feeling from you guys was, would you just shut up now? Um, and I appreciate the openness that I'm feeling tonight, and I feel like this is the beginning of um, a future of more collaborative and inclusive working together. Um, I do want to say that uh, the people in, in the group that I've been working with on this petition and um, all along in all the meetings, I have never heard anyone express any sentiment that is bashing of the police. I want to say that we have um, respect for the, the idea of um, a police force that respects the safety of all residents in town. Um, our concern, however, is that there is one voice that clearly wasn't, and we didn't know how broad that was within our police department. Um, and I, I do want to say that, um, you know, in the interest of transparency, Adam, <laughs> I wish that we had known before today that this was being done here tonight. Um, there's only a small handful of us that were able to turn up at the last minute, but um, because we didn't know it was on the agenda. Um, and um, um, so I want to say that um, as a white English-speaking woman um, of privilege, as you know, all of most of us in here are white and of privilege, I'm able to be here and I'm able to speak up. But I know of people in town who are not, who are intimidated, who are scared to speak up, who also have a history of having been racially bullied by Lieutenant Padrini and will not and, and are scared to speak up. So I would like to 
let you know that we will be their voice until it's safe enough for them to speak up. What we really want is a town that is safe for everyone to have their voice heard. Um, and, and I hope that going forward we can really make that a priority and I think it will take a long time, but um, we're not going away. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Um, Elizabeth, you want another bite? Okay. <laughs> Uh, name and address for the record, sorry. Hi, uh, Elizabeth Dre, Jason Street. Um, thank you for letting me speak earlier. I would like to speak about the petition and I would like to speak about the signatures on the petition. I would like to publicly state that there was no attempt to conceal anything about the petition. I would like to also say that it is not purely an Arlington issue as Lieutenant Padrini's writings were put out in a statewide publication and in addition that it affects guests of ours, people who come into Arlington to eat at our restaurants, to shop at our stores, are also affected by the policing that happens within our town limits. So to say that this is an Arlington only issue um, does not take those important uh, things into consideration. Um, I would also like to speak to uh, the issue of hateful graffiti, which is a big issue that we are facing, and Arlington is not the only town that is facing this issue. But I would like to say that when you have a Arlington police officer whose racist writings go, are, are, are put out there to the state of Massachusetts with no real consequences, then you are giving license to others to follow because they will also think that there are no real consequences. And that is why what we do is important. We, you are sending a message to everybody, elementary school, middle school, high school, everybody, that that is not acceptable here. Okay? And it has to be more than just words. It has to be it has to be the actions. It would also be great to have a curriculum that, you know, in our public school, starting in elementary school, teaching kids how to talk about race, how to talk about these issues. This is a moment in front of us that we can remake who Arlington is, and I hope that we take advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you. And just as an aside, um, with the community conversation with our colleagues from the school committee, because there really is a, a separation. Yes. And I'm not trying to pass it off, I'm just, okay. Uh, next we have Beth Melovchik. Melovchik, I apologize, Beth. You do pretty well. Beth Melovchik, 20 Russell Street, and I'm a, a proud town meeting member. Um, I am very thankful for our first responders, and I am grateful that the select board heard us, finally. I won't thank the town manager for doing his job. I'm sorry it took so long. I hope that when the National League of Cities are here uh, for their race and equity expert and leadership expertise, that they have a component that covers the um, misuse of force for leadership. I spoke about this before. I'll bring it up again. In the FOIA uh, emails that are published on the website that was cited by Elizabeth, there is one from a former select board member uh, speaking about deploying police to public meetings. And that continues to concern me, and I hope there'll be a teaching component from the National League of Cities, Race, Equity, and Leadership to cover training for all of those people in town hall and for the select board. I think it's very important. We don't want to intimidate people from coming to fora, such as the one here tonight, or for any around town, when they have concerns or issues. I grew up knowing that I could always go to a policeman if I felt endangered or um, needed help, and I hope that that's always the case, and that they won't be used to intimidate people or members of the public who have uh, differing opinions. Um, uh, 
this is not related to the prior conversation. <laughs> I would like to know where Lieutenant Buzzle's flagpole is and his plaque that was removed from Buzzle Field some months ago. Veterans Day is approaching. I live in that neighborhood. I am the daughter of a combat veteran and my uncle is um, still missing over Europe and it means a lot to me to see these uh, flags and veterans monuments around town and the squares and streets named for them. I'm not sure if we do it in any other part of the country. I only encountered that when I moved here and so I am very concerned and remain concerned that Lieutenant Richard Buzzle, who was lost over Vietnam, that his flagpole and plaque is missing. I hope it's returned soon. Um, and we can discuss at a later point, I would like a grove of trees to be allowed to flourish there at the edge of the child's playground there. I know that I, I've spoken about that before on the Arlington list. So, um, and I do appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and share my feelings with you. I, I love Arlington. I think it's a great community. Um, and I've met some great people here speaking up for it. So thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Just point of information, I think actually, Mr. I've had a conversation with Jeffrey Chunglo. Um, I don't want to misrepresent. You probably have better. Yeah, so in terms of simply put, un under the watchful eye of the town's veteran agent, veterans agent and the Veterans Council, the Buzzle Memorial and flagpole is being refurbished as part of a capital improvement program. So once the refurbishment is done, they'll be reinstalled, looking as good as new. And, and knowing our... Uh, Director of Veterans Affairs, probably saying his name wrong. Um, there will be an appropriate service, um, himself also a veteran, recently retired from the Navy. We do have, I know you've seen the POW chair um, right outside the select board office, that he and his wife, Diane, every time they say, oh, Diane's such a great resource, it's not me, um, that uh, he takes all of those as a veteran um, uh, ceremonies and remembrances um, and holidays and the appropriateness of them and how to be treated um, really to a stellar level um, with utmost respect. So um, we'll definitely, through the manager and the board, be putting out when that will be rededicated. And I'm sure um, usually gets three to 400 people there. <laughs> um, so it'll be appropriate. And then last, we have Adam McNeil. Hi, uh, Adam McNeil on 19 Melrose Street. Um, I have a um, kind of announcement about a different form of community engagement, but um, most of this, what I'm going to say, is can be found on the um, town website under the Envision Arlington community page, but um, a number of the precincts have uh, scheduled fall precinct meetings, um, which I think is really great, and of the ones that haven't yet scheduled, most of them are in the process of being scheduled. Um, this is really for two uh, purposes. Um, it's for really demystifying the process of bringing matters before town meeting, which, I mean, it's compared to a lot of town governments or municipality governments, is a really open process, but there's still some areas of not exact um, understanding through that. Um, it's a forum for people to talk about a lot of issues as well, um, personal, personal to them. <coughs> and then it's also for people who are interested in the process of how do you run for town meeting in the first place. A lot of those things start getting semi-formalized around December, so the um, meetings are scheduled from starting fairly soon through to um, the, uh, well, the last scheduled one is early December right now. So um, we have, well, right now we have precinct one, three, and five meeting Monday, October 28th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. there. But um, the um, precincts 12 and 14 are meeting um, Wednesday, November 6th, at the Bracket School from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, precincts 8 and 10 are meeting at Sunday, November 10th, at the Senior Center from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, precinct 7 is meeting at uh, Wednesday, November 13th, at the Gibbs School, again, 6.30 to 8 p.m. And precincts 16 and 18, Thursday, December 5th, the Dahlen School at 6.30 to 8 p.m. Thank you. So are they all 6.30 p.m.? Because I wrote down 6 to 8.30 for Bracket. Did I hear that wrong? It is 6.30 p.m. for Bracket as well. So one that's not 6.30 p.m. is the Sunday one at the Senior Center for Precincts uh, 8 through 10, and that is at 3 to 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, that's all I have signed up. Was there anyone else who didn't get to sign in? Yes, Madam Chair, I didn't sign in. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, 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 
uh, Steve Moore, 64 Piedmont Street in Arlington. I will sign in, and I apologize for my appearance after my recent surgery. The dressing is a challenge with one hand. <laughs> so anyway, I apologize. I had not planned to speak tonight, um, but uh, based on some of the comments that I've heard, I did want to uh, make some brief comments. Um, earlier we heard um, sort of the implication that maybe this was not an important issue that we're talking about to do with uh, Lieutenant Pedrini's comments, that there are more important things for the uh, Arlington Police Department to be focusing on and issues in town. Uh, there are very many other important things. However, the implication that this is not important, that this is a second secondary issue that uh, we should move beyond quickly, get it behind us, uh, is I think in, in uh, severe error because the term implicit bias, which I appreciate Mr. Javelin bringing up earlier tonight in some of the comments that we've heard, implicit bias is a whole issue that we have had come to the fore over the past about two, three years in terms of a commonly used term. I think it's unfortunately a far more common problem than any of us, including myself, have realized as I've discovered in myself regularly uh, finding myself now having implicit biases that I had not considered before. And that's just me. I think the fact this issue came out, the fact that the board, not happily, but uh, embraced it, the fact the town manager is working towards it, the fact the petitioners made some comments that perhaps uh, animated the process a bit more, I think all of that's very important. And one of the things I love about the town is the fact that uh, they're willing to take it and work with it and resolve it and do the hard work that's gonna be required. Because as we've heard before, this is uh, repeatedly, uh, this is gonna be a long-term effort because implicit bias is a tough thing to work with. I wanna applaud the town and the town manager for uh, the actions that they've taken over the past couple of weeks. Thanks. Thank you for that TV right in front of you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just name and address for the record. My name is Sally Kebdai. I'm here as a resident and representative of the buildings at 840, 846 Mass Ave, as well as 17 Newman Way. We are teachers and coaches of Arlington Public School students. We are volunteers promoting health, um, food equity and food security through work in the volunteer garden. We are instructors of budding musicians in town. We are business owners um, of shops in Arlington Center and employees of local essentials such as Stop and Shop. We are simultaneously, in the name of debunking implicit bias, we are immigrants. We are people living on fixed incomes for a variety of reasons. We are individuals with disabilities who depend on Arlington's public transit for our independence. These are neither mutually exclusive nor contradictory. We have lived in the area for two years, 10 years. Some of us have lived in the area for over 20 years. And under our previous owners, we were cared for by a family who was invested in making sure that long-term residents could stay in their homes. We are here because our identity and our homes are now in question. Our historically, or our 60 units have historically been naturally occurring affordable housing. However, later this, earlier this year, our buildings were purchased by Torrington Properties. We are concerned because many of us have been living with lout leases for three years now. Torrington is actively evicting tenants from two recently acquired buildings in JP. The business model, their business model, is to acquire multifamily buildings and raise rents. The industry standard is to finance acquisitions by raising rents, and our buildings were purchased at $16 million, <coughs> which is 67% more than their current value. So naturally, we're concerned. Our plan based on what Torrington has stated. They wish to renovate and raise rents. 
they've also expressed some openness to working with residents to stay in their homes. We formed a tenants association compromised of about 40 of our 60 units. We have met with our new owners as well as City Life, Vida Urbana, and are starting discussions to mitigate the negative impacts of this acquisition. We plan to negotiate a collective bargaining plan that assure current tenants will not be driven out of their homes because of exorbitant and sudden rent increases. We are here to make you aware of our situation so that you can provide informed support going forward. If Jay and Torrington Properties, Jay Vicino, the owner, and Torrington Properties would like to join the Arlington community, then they are accountable to it, to us and to you, our representatives. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Let's, um, is there anyone else? If not, citizen forum is closed. And I did let that last speaker go a little bit longer because it's a brand new issue that we've heard. Um, so I apologize. <laughs> Next uh, agenda item 13. And I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Town Manager, that unless you want to take one of these out of order, I'll just continue on with the agenda the way that it is? Um, or? I think that, that's okay. Okay, because yeah. I see Mr. Pooler and others here. So agenda item four, 13, Mugar 40B application update. Uh, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so this is quite an extensive topic. I'll try to keep this to uh, what the manager suggested is the medium version. But if members of the board or if they're inclined to uh, allow members of the public to ask any questions, I'll try to answer them as thoroughly as I can. Um, I put this item on the agenda as a means of conveying to the public broadly, um, as well as other folks in town, that the Housing uh, Appeals Committee reached a decision in our longstanding, quote unquote, one and a half percent safe harbor litigation. Um, by way of background, this board, um, initially opposed a uh, project eligibility application back in the summer of 2015 relative to Arlington Lens Realty's proposal to build approximately 220 units over in the Mugar Wetlands area near Thorndike Field. After that, about nine months later, the actual application under a Chapter 40B conference of permit came in. The zoning board convened a hearing and asserted the town was, had achieved safe harbor status. And just to refresh everybody's recollection, what that means is not that the town doesn't allow comprehensive permits or affordable housing, it's that the town would be able to retain local control such that the ZBA's decision on a comprehensive permit would be the final authority and it wouldn't be able to be appealed to the Housing Appeals Committee. The 1.5% calculation is a fairly complicated matter. It involves a lot of different sort of technical aspects we use our GIS system to actually run the calculation. Uh, the applicants, Arlington Land Realty, appealed our assertion of 1.5% safe harbor status. That went to DHCD. DHCD ruled in their favor. We filed an interlocutory appeal to the Housing Appeals Committee, and that is where it has been for the last three years. I provided the board with a copy of that decision, as well as our objections to uh, the decision as it was initially proposed. The long and short of it is the hearing officer who hears the matter issues a proposed decision to counsel for the parties before it's reviewed by the larger housing appeals committee of about five members like this board. Our objections are more or less, uh, have more or less remained the same because the decision didn't change much on the basis of our objections. I won't necessarily run down all those objections unless board members feel it would be prudent because I think they're pretty well articulated by the special counsel in the objections, but I'd say the major grievances that we have are that um, as an evidentiary matter, the Housing Appeals Committee credited the applicants as providing sufficient data to establish the town is at 1.37% um, and did not credit our 1.53% even though the only basis for data was the town's GIS system. So the town provided the only basis for data Mr. Kurowski, a GIS systems analyst, uh, provided that data, pre-filed testimony, and live testimony, 
yet the decision makes it sounds as if he just kind of showed up and talked a little bit about the GIS system. And what I want to let folks know is that Adam Krauske uh, was a brilliant witness, and he testified well on behalf of the town. The second thing is that the decision um, uh, continues to have some serious disagreements about how to read uh, statutes and regulations together. That's probably not that interesting for everybody sitting in the audience. It's probably too long of a situation to get into. But I'm happy to answer any questions that folks have about it, either in, the, in this context or offline. Going forward, uh, what I want to emphasize is that the Zoning Board of Appeals needs to reconvene within 30 days of the decision being made by the Housing Appeals Committee. The applicants have asked for an adjournment of the hearing scheduled tomorrow. The ZBA and uh, the applicants and basically everybody else probably benefits from agreeing to adjourn that decision, but that will have to be formally taken by a vote tomorrow. I do not expect that there will be substantive discussion or even really procedural discussion of it because I do expect that an adjournment is probably likely to be granted. And I expect that adjournment probably won't be until sometime in December. But the clock won't be running against us because they all have sought the adjournment. And really the only reason to really pursue a hearing that quickly was because we're on the clock. Once the hearing re uh, reopens in earnest, the uh, ZBA has 180 days to consider the actual substance of the application. Whereas we've been arguing sort of in an interlocutory fashion about this piece of it that says the town has certain rights. And again, it's a fairly close question. 1.37 if you're the applicants, 1.53 if you're off us with the threshold being 1.5. It's been a fairly close matter. Um, the ZBA will essentially have to retain experts to scrutinize all the claims made by Arlington Land Realty. They'll want to hear from the public. They'll want to basically consider all those matters which they're allowed to consider. And there's basically a list of things that they're allowed to consider in terms of weighing the need for affordable housing against other valid concerns. There are some things that they can't consider. They're not allowed to consider the impact on our schools, for example. So the ZBA will be looking forward to a full-throated presentation from the applicants. I think they'll be looking forward to an equally full-throated presentation from members of the community about their concerns. And after that 180-day period, which is likely to be extended, probably sometimes at the desire of the applicant, probably some other times by the desire of the ZBA, it's likely to be extended past 180 days. When the hearing officially closes, they'll have 40 days to issue a decision. That decision will either be to grant the permit, deny the permit, or grant the permit with conditions. Most of these decisions are grant with conditions, and then there's litigation. Because I, oftentimes the applicants aren't satisfied with the conditions. So for example, if you said, I'm OK with 30 units instead of 220, and they'd say, well, that, that, those conditions aren't acceptable, and they'll appeal it to the HAC. Um, abutters can also appeal these things at different periods of time. So what I want folks to know is that this is going to be in for a long haul. I was just doing a little bit of research before tonight. There is a case out of Sandwich that has been going on since 2004. So that's not likely to be the case here. But these are long matters for a whole variety of reasons, both substantively and procedurally, as everyone tries to essentially assert their rights. It was important, though, for us to assert the 1.5%. We have re preserved that issue for appeal. And it may be that a court at some point in time, if all of the parties involved don't agree on what should basically happen at this site, that that issue remains and can be brought up again. I also want to note, just for po folks watching, that we're not alone. In the last few years, Braintree, Waltham, Newton, Stoneham, Andover, and Hingham have all tried to assert 1.5% or 10% or some other means of having safe harbor status, and they've all been denied by the HAC. Indeed, one of the central issues in our case is how we treat water bodies. In Newton's case, it was conceded that water bodies um, should be deducted from the denominator, but in our case, that was not conceded. So these are complicated technical matters. What's going to end up being before the ZBA is the actual substance about whether this application uh, and its creation of affordable housing units basically outweighs the other concerns that the community has. Um, if there are questions that the board has, I'm happy to answer them. If the board wants to take comments from the public, 
whatever is appropriate. But I just want to make it clear that the board doesn't have authority at this point in time to make any further decisions with respect to this specific matter. It is before the ZBA, and the ZBA, again, is charged with taking the matter on on its merits, considering the evidence before them and the standards that they have to apply. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Dunn? Uh, thank you for the update. Uh, so three years ago, or whatever it was, when uh, the board last had a really serious discussion of MUGAR, um, one of the things we said was we directed the town manager to make sure that the ZBA had access to all the resources that it needed to, to decide this well and properly. And um, it's just, and I, I don't know if we actually need to, like, if we want to take another vote at, at a future meeting and actually say that again because we've had enough turnover, but at the same time, I'm fairly confident that we all unanimously agree that with that and uh, that the town manager knows it, but at the same time, it is really worth saying and saying loudly, especially because we've got a member in the ZBA who I just want to feel very equipped that they've got the, the board, the, they have everything they need to uh, hear this properly. Attorney High. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also want to echo that the town and its uh, agencies have been making good on that. Town meeting approved additional supplemental funds for the purposes of providing technical expertise. Most technical, ex technical expertise costs are covered actually by the applicant. They're required to, for most of them by law but we have additional funds that was appropriated by town meeting. I also want folks to know that the planning department secured a grant to provide technical assistance within the hearings, ironically somewhat, from DHCD. Um, DHCD is a wonderful community partner in most ways. This is not about DHCD being good or bad. It's about the town asserting and vindicating its rights to the maximum extent possible and supporting the ZBA as it has to consider a complicated, complicated application. Okay. Um. Not really sure how to go here. It seems we're having a lot of select board meetings on uh, outside of our genre, but I know we do have most, if not all, of the ZBA here. Uh, do you already have a planned meeting or conversation scheduled with them, or are you saying you're asking me to call on them and have a mini ZBA hearing? Uh, no, no, uh, Madam Chair. I think what I'm uh, what I want to use the select board's meeting as, as, as an opportunity to just educate the public on what's happening. So okay. it's most likely that the ZBA hearing that was uh, scheduled for tomorrow is probably going to be adjourned to sometime in December. Mm -hmm. um, at, in the interim, we plan to make sure that the ZBA has the resources that they need, either from Special Counsel Witten or from the Technical Assistant uh, Counsel uh, Haverty, myself, the Planning Department, anybody else that's needed for them to make, understand what they need to consider once the hearing resumes in earnest. Okay. And I guess I kind of feel like through you I've made the offer. Um, and we're all in the same room. Is there anything from, I see some of our ZBA Zoning Board of Appeal members here. Um, any questions or anything you're looking for? And could you, for the, besides for the record, say in your name and ZBA, Absolutely. identify the other members of the Zoning Board of Appeals that are here? There so are actually no other, just me. Okay, um, just I'm Christian Klein, I'm the Vice Chair of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you all for reappointing me um, this evening. Um, we're looking forward to, I guess that's kind of a, an odd thing to say, but we're looking forward to this, uh, this process as it moves forward. Um, I'm not here speaking as, as a member, as, I'm just speaking um, as myself, I'm not here representing the board. Um, part of the reason I'm coming here tonight is to find out actually what's going on because um, since we had the vote, um, I believe it was two or three years ago, December, um, there has been absolutely no whisper of anything as to what's been going on with this case. Um, and to being on the ZBA, feeling that my, me, myself, I'm not really sure what's going on and what the status is and then uh, basically finding out that something is going on because I read about it in the papers or because there's, it's on the agenda for the ZBA. So um, I'm glad to be here to, f to find out a little bit more about what's going on and um, hopefully um, we can be brought up to speed as to uh, the current case and, and where things stand. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I do have, um, this is going to be a long process, and I'll leave it to Attorney Heim and Attorney Chapdelaine in terms of um, Attorney Chapdelaine. I just made it. It's like, is that a promotion or a demotion? I've been in court too much. <laughs> Working, not. 
I'm not a perp. <laughs> Anyways, um, in terms of, you know, the information and um, working with the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Select Board, and others, um, uh, I do agree with my um, Vice Chairman, Mr. Dunn, that, um, you know, implied support. I think uh, working with Mr. Dunn and um, uh, Town Manager Chapter Lane at an appropriate time having this as an agenda item um, with su perhaps some suggested wording, perhaps pulling up the previous board's votes. Everybody can look at that and see if it needs to be edited, amended, modified in any way. And um, I do have, um, unfortunately, because I, John being out of state, he's home <laughs> for, uh, for almost two weeks, I haven't been able to reach out to the people that there are a couple of ideas that I think, and one in particular, um, and she knows who she is that I haven't texted back to meet yet. Um, but before, you know, giving it a life, I want to make sure, you know, is it something justifiable, legal, and something that should be be uh, before us, because uh, I don't want to waste Attorney Heim or my colleague's time with that, as well as um, I'm thinking when we have this next on the agenda for a vote, um, but that will afford board members the time to continue conversations regarding UGAR and possible option or options, um, and then have that discussion as a full board, because we can't discuss when we're not here at the meeting, when that agenda item also appears. So, um, Attorney Heim? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I just want to clarify something, because I think it's important for the public's interest. I want to let Mr. Klein know that I distributed something that was supposed to reach ZBA members, uh, before it would have gotten to anybody else. So there may be some communication problem, but the board members should have been notified uh, with a copy of the decision as well as um, an attorney-client communication about the decision uh, well in advance of tonight. So I'm sure that we can, I'll speak about that more and we'll get that kink figured out. No. But uh, I don't want folks to think that this is the first uh, forum for, should be the first forum for ZBA members. I think there's 100% agreement on that front. Definitely, and I apologize, Mr. Klein, and you know I'll work with Attorney Heim to identify what I'm not doing. No, no, not, right. not you, Madam okay. Chair. No, it's nothing to do with no, you. No, I'm not saying that. I, I'm trying to put myself in there too, so I'm not just <laughs> saying one person. Um, Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and and you know, unfortunately, we got that, that decision. But as Attorney Heim said, that you, you, we now actually get into the substance of the. Or we'll get into the substance of the application application and not just whether a safe harbor existed for the community. And, and while this will be before the ZBA, I know a few years ago Mr. Hurd and, and myself were not on the board, but the board sent a letter to Mass Housing on August 18, 2015, opposing a project eligibility approval. And among other reasons that were cited is that the proposed development is ill-suited to the project site, which is comprised largely of unbuildable wetlands and is located in the flood hazard zone. Now, I think if we take a vote, and I hope we do at some point, we will still take that position. We, we don't decide this, but we can make our position known uh, on this, and town meeting has acted on this, the town has acted on this through its comprehensive plan, and, and there is a consensus in the community that this site is not suitable for the type of development that's proposed. Um, as a result of, of losing the one and a half percent, and correct me if I'm wrong, Attorney Heim, um, the town might not be able to rely on its own wetlands bylaw, but will still be able to rely on the State Wetlands Protection Act um, in, in determining the suitability of the site. Uh, so we are allowed to uh, apply our wetlands bylaw. It's actually one of the few things that the comprehensive permit doesn't actually totally cover. So they will need to go in front of the Conservation Commission at some point in time when they strategically decide to do that, Mr. DeCourcy, is an interesting question. But the, it, is, it is covered. We're allowed to assert uh, more stringent standards. But um, I think what, what I expect that they'll argue is that they're only building within a certain part of the uplands. So it's, 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 one, it's one of um, a few key issues that sort of will run parallel to the substantive proceedings. That's, that's correct. OK. All right. Thank you. And, and so I think it's important as a board, and this board has already acted, so I'm not in terms of what the position is, but I think it's important as a community that we continue to assert of what I mean, appears obvious to most people who are, who are down there, that this is not suitable. And, and I, you know, I, I know there are a number of people here 
uh, in the community or in the neighborhood who are here this evening. And again, while we're, we weren't the party of interest before the Housing Appeals Committee, we will not be making the decision. Um, I think we do have a voice in, in terms of you know, how the community feels about this, and, and I think um, it would be helpful if we act as one board, when the time is appropriate, that, that we take action as a board uh, to, to, to let our voice be heard <coughs> even stronger. Mr. Hart. Echoing that, and I think, you know, just so we're clear amongst the five members of this board that this is always, it's, it's a, I think the first day I decided I was gonna run, I've been vocal on this issue because I grew up in this area and the proposed project would just be a nightmare for the area, for the wetlands, for the traffic, congestion, it's already bad in that area. So just to be put it on the record, as I think Steve did, that you know, I will join the other members of the board in doing what we can to prevent something like this from putting a detriment on the town. And I just wanna commend the people, the Attorney Heim, our outside council and all the people from the town that have been, put this issue forward and have been uh, fighting this for many years before I came here and hopefully I can stand with them and continue to fight <coughs> this for the residents of that area. Mr. Kelly. Yeah, I, I just want to say, yeah, I think, um, you know, usually I, I'm very hesitant to get involved in other boards matters. However, my recollection is that at the time that, that the board took that action, the ZBA had actually asked for advisory opinions from a number of um, committees and commissions um, in town. And I know that uh, Mr. Hurd and Mr. DeCourcy were not yet on this board, so it is probably appropriate for us to bring up that, that vote that we had had previously and to um, reaffirm it as a, as a full board. So it constituted now. Um, I think that probably is a, an appropriate next um, step. Okay. Um, you, no? we'll Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded Second. by Mr. Kiro. Any f further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those Unanimous vote. Um, that was a move to receive. <coughs> okay, sorry. Uh, agenda item 14, discussion and approval, authorizing the town manager to sign on to statement to Massport and FAA. Mr. Town Manager, Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is a matter uh, that Selectman Curo brought up at the last meeting under new business uh, based on a meeting that uh, both he and I had attended just before the meeting. Uh, following that meeting, uh, Medford, Somerville, and Cambridge released a statement uh, to Massport and the FAA basically saying, we, we want you to start listening to us about moving the planes to one of what are several new directional patterns they could follow. Uh, right after they released this, several of the concerned residents reached out to me. Mr. Kiro as well, asking whether or not we would sign on to this. I called the mayor in Medford's office. They were literally, the woman I spoke with was, was literally typing an email to Arlington, Belmont, and Watertown, and, I've, and a few other communities inviting us to sign on. Uh, I think the board's authorization for me to sign on to this would be a very smart move on our part <coughs> to show solidarity with these communities that we're all working together, as well as to our residents, that they understand that we are listening to them in regards to this issue. That said, the real work is beyond this statement in coming to some agreement amongst communities what the new dispersion pattern will be that would be the most equitable and most, <clears throat> and most fair. So more to come, but I would strongly urge the board to support uh, signing on to this statement tonight. Mr. Kiro? I move approval. Second. Moved by Mr. Kiro. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Kiro? Thank you, and uh, thank you, Mr. Manager, for br bringing it forward. Um, Actually, we should uh, probably make sure that there's a distribution out to the, to the board. I think Mr. Ciano, um, who is uh, the community's representative on the Massachusetts Citizens Advisory Committee, just within the last couple of days forwarded on um, the results of the um, MIT study that was done. And it has actually heat maps with, um, gosh, what are there, about 10 different scenarios, I think, that are in there, and, and how all of the... Um, the various communities within the flight paths would be affected either for the better or for the worse, both compared to original conditions before the um, RNAV procedures were put in place, and also just um, as, as uh, compared to just um, 2017. So basically, essentially what, what we're looking at today, 
which of these these options would would make make conditions better or worse and for where for which which communities um, I know that he had circulated Mr. Siano has developed this list based on people who have been bringing forward complaints um, on on the um, the the air noise and I think I ended up on his list somehow because <laughs> somebody sent it to me um, and uh, so I know that some of those residents and, and he um, are going to try to get together to just look look at those I mean some of them look pretty obvious just looking at the pictures but I think that it it'll be possible to have a couple of options that that maybe the the manager or Maybe we could invite Mr. Ciano in, actually. I think that might not be, be bad to invite Mr. Ciano in at some point to actually meet with us. Um, could recommend a position for the board to take um, and to kind of instruct him or advise him, actually, as he goes in and, and, and tries to present the case for us. That's so could cool. I leave that under your tutelage in terms of sure. when you think it's an appropriate uh, yeah. agenda item, what it should look like? It will Beyond be within. I think it will be within the coming within the coming weeks. I mean, so j just in essence, I mean, the, the 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 options have to do with at what altitude do you do you disperse the flights, or do you do you have some random dispersion of the flights, or do you go back to manual dispersion? It's it's, it's fairly technical, but I think that that um, the the work that MIT did on behalf of them actually presents it pretty clearly, and I I don't think it's going to be that difficult. So if you can contact me right before. Thursday, yeah. Time yeah. What agenda? The next one or the one after? Yep. That you think it would be appropriate? Yep. Um, Mr. Hurd? Ms. Crooked. So, and what we're voting on is a letter. This is in support of a diversion of one particular runway at Logan. It's all related to 33. And yes. It's commercial jets. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Happy to support it. Um, I haven't particularly picked up on that noise complaint as someone that was up at the top of the, the hill, we still catch a lot of helicopter noise. So hopefully we can rely on them if we try to attack that one to uh, support us as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I'm happy to support this as well. And that as a person whose neighborhood is actually under one of the flight paths from runway 33L when planes take a left and, and Medford go over. I, I hear a lot about it. And, and just for people viewing at home, and whether I, I know the board has talked about this before, but there's a reference to, to runway 33L. Well, runway 33L at Logan Airport is activated when the wind comes out of the northwest primarily. And so the planes take off into the wind. The planes go up to Medford, and then there are two or three courses that they take. It used to be several more. It used to be widely dispersed. Will two of them come over Arlington at least, and then another one goes to the north. Um, and when the planes come over Arlington, um, over my house are about 3,000 3, feet, uh, above on the way to recruiting altitude of 35,000 feet. But that's just from um, some statistics that we've received in our neighborhood. The one thing I'll say about this, and I think it's important that the communities work together because there's always going to be wind out of the northwest. Runway 33L is always going to be used. So um, another community that was dealing this, with this issue said, that, well, the best we can really do is collectively share the, share the pain, not try to distribute it to, to, to one community uh, exclusively. So I think to the extent that the five or six communities that are really affected like this uh, with this work together, um, you know, maybe some real results can, can take place, and the FAA will, will hear us. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, I think in further interest of transparency, it's important to realize it's not just a matter of shifting between communities, but there is a potential that measures to reduce the impacts on some of our East Arlington neighborhoods could result in some impacts in some other parts of town, too. So it's... And, and, and there are some days, just candidly, where... The lumber of the commons. You know, every two minutes, there's a plane coming over. And, and I think we're, we're fortunate. We live near an airport, and I came back from a trip today. It's nice to live within a half hour of Logan Airport, so there, there are some things you have to deal with. But at the same time, um, I think for those that, that are affected by the constant every couple minutes or when there are weather delays 
and you've got a plan leaving at 1230 or 1 in the morning because it was supposed to leave at 10 and get pushed back, those are the type of situations I think people really get upset about. But, so, I mean, this... This is, no, this right. is... This and is we'll, we'll have the bigger discussion, Absolutely. continue this at a, a future... Absolutely. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure. Um, I'm going in and out here. <laughs> uh, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now come to the discussion, high school borrowing and potential impacts on, here we go, Kevin Grayley, MWRA debt shift. Mr. Chapdelaine. Good job. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll just briefly introduce this, and then I want to ask Deputy Town Manager Sandy Pooler to talk about this with the board. Uh, but as the board recalls several meetings ago when the board uh, voted to increase water sewer rates, we talked about in the future what it would look like if the board uh, did choose to reduce the water sewer debt shift as high school borrowing rolls on. We're now just a few weeks out from going forward with that first high school borrowing. So we wanted to present to the board two potential options for how much we would borrow and what that would correspond to and how much of the debt shift could be reduced uh, next year during a tax resetting process, not this December, but December of calendar year 2020. So I'll ask Sandy uh, to come up, w walk you through the, the document that's on your, um, on your desks. And, and tonight we're, we're frankly um, looking for any feedback you have before we finalize what our borrowing will be. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, you, you have a packet here of three pages. The first page has some nice big type, and the next two pages are really going to challenge you to read. Uh, but they are the backup that shows um, that it's, and by the way, prepared by our uh, financial advisor, Hilltop Securities showing what the annual debt payments would be on two different scenarios for, for selling debt for the high school, either $58 million or $80 million. And we asked them to run those two different scenarios um, because they corresponded to a couple of different times in the uh, cash flow projections that we have for the high school as, and would get us a certain way farther along in the project. Um, if we were to sell uh, $58 million worth of debt, that would give us enough cash to pay the contractors and keep the, con the project going through about March 2021. Um, the town has had a history of selling debt usually about this time of year. Um, Phyllis Marshall and I, the, uh, the down treasurer collector, have been discussing this with our <coughs> financial advisor, and I, we think what we'd like to do is to move to a schedule where we're selling debt uh, after the first of the year, uh, usually in February, I think is what we'll look at. And the advantage of that is once you sell it, um, your first debt payments don't come due until the following fiscal year. So when you sell the debt, you don't have to um, all of a sudden come up with a, a debt payment um, that you won't know the exact amount of until you actually sell the debt. Um, and we think that will save us some money and maybe uh, save us some interest in the long run. It will also make things a little more predictable. So our first option with that plan in mind is to uh, go to um, $58 million. On this first sheet here, what you will see is uh, a $58 million debt sale, assuming we get a 3% in interest rate on 30-year debt, which um, from what we're seeing in the market these days is a reasonable assumption. It may be actually slightly high, but we decided to be a little conservative with the estimate. Um, that would mean that uh, our debt service on that $58 million would be about $2.9 million per year. <clears throat> um, if we were then to shift that off of the water and sewer rates, um, so that as people's um, tax bills go up for the debt exclusion for the high school, the same amount would come <coughs> off of their tax bills for the uh, exclusion that is there to subsidize the water and sewer rates and shift that amount onto the water and sewer rates instead. Um, there would be about a 47% um, shift as opposed to we currently shift 100% of that uh, MWRA money. That would mean a rate impact 
uh, our total revenue for FY21 of about a, a 23% increase in water and sewer <coughs> rates. Or um, on a per household basis, using uh, the average Arlington consumption of about 60 cubic centimeters per year. Excuse me. Yes, cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeters. It would be about $130 per uh, house. Our option would be to borrow more money. Uh, we have looked at a lot of different scenarios. Uh, we, for tonight's discussion, just came up with the example of $80 million. $80 million would get us all the way through the end of um, fiscal year 21. Um, so paying for... Uh, high school this fiscal year and this next fiscal year um, before we would have to sell debt again. Um, one of the reasons to sell more debt now is because interest rates are so low and um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the economy. We don't know what's happening and the Fed keeps doing signals back and forth. If I really knew what they were doing, I would be standing here, I'd be on Wall Street. But I do know that they're very low right now. And so, our, uh, again, in consultation with the treasurer collector and with our financial advisors, um, it seems like adding more debt now, um, not so much that we can't spend it within a two-year period that the uh, tax laws and what they're called arbitrage rules require us to spend, because it requires us to spend money within a certain period of selling it but enough so that we can take advantage uh, for the taxpayers of lower interest rates. Um, doing that would mean that our uh, debt shift, instead of being the 100% of the debt shift that we have now, it would be down to 23%. Um, and it would mean a rate impact for FY21 and total increased revenue of about 30%, or about $190 per household. Um, there's nothing magical about 80 but we just sort of picked a number to give you some sense of the different ranges. The other advantage of, um, of going with a higher number is um, the debt shift amount we could do is, is sort of a, a cap. In other words, we could go up to this total amount of shift from taxes to the water and sewer rate. But uh, we don't have to do it all at once. We could do some of it. Uh, the next time you set rates for FY21 and then the remainder um, later on. You will have some flexibility on doing that. We will come back to ask you to set those debt, those water and sewer rates sometime probably late winter or early spring so that they can be in effect for FY21 um, and so that also um, uh, taxpayers will know what the impact on their water and sewer rates will be um, and that once we sell the debt that we're about to sell, um, we'll be able to tell people what the impact on, on their real estate bills are for the high school. Um, I just want to add one other note about that. We have looked into it, and we do know that we will be able to um, take whatever impact there is from the high school sales and have them start to go into effect with the preliminary bills in August, next August, and spread it out over four bills throughout the year, as opposed to waiting until the actual bills. So I think that will also try to um, impact, uh, mitigate the impact. Um, this is some portion of the total debt that we're gonna sell for the high school, so there will be more debt sales down the road. In total, uh, the town share is about $204 million of the total project, so there will be additional debt sales going forward. Um, and so a, a chance to, again, continue to sh move this shift. The discussion tonight is really to get your feedback about how quickly to move that shift, to move just what we need to at the $58 million or some number higher than that. Uh, and again, we're suggesting something in the range of $80 million. I know that's a lot of information. I um, appreciate your attention to it, and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions. Um, I can start out. Um, when you cite the 130 with a 23 percent and the 190 with a 30 percent, did you base that on um, value of the average home in Arlington, the uh, amount of water used by the average water rate? 
Japan. So uh, I, I believe uh, the uh, DPW director, Mike Rodemacher, made a presentation to the board uh, earlier this summer looking at some potential debt shifts. And what he looked at there was the amount of consumption that the average homeowner uses, which is about 60 uh, cubic centimeters per year. Um, when the MW, I, you, you may remember he talked about the MWRA using a figure that uh, was higher than that, about 120 was what they use on all the publications that they come out with. But we know from looking at usage here in Arlington that people, in fact, use about half of that here as homeowners. So we looked at the actual usage per homeowner uh, in town and based those numbers off of that. Okay. Um, I'll state my personal feelings on this, recognizing, you know, finance is not my expertise. Um, but I also live with my husband. <laughs> and I hear similar things from many other people um, when the tax bill comes in that, you know, we say the average. And I think it's because I'm hearing from, from the people that don't fall under the average. And it says, yeah, you said 130, but it's more like 335, something like that. So my preference would be, and I've had this conversation with Mr. Chapdelaine, is um, we've been very cognizant of with the past, with, with the original exclusion for the Gibbs, Junior High East, Hardy, um, Thompson, then the most recent override and uh, debt exclusion for Arlington High School with the recent increase in uh, the water and sewer rates, um, as well as also hitting in that bubble, the reassessments. Um, with that, I've heard from a lot of people, and it's probably most of these people I'm hearing from really are on fixed incomes, and these really are people who count, you know, five dimes and ten nickels, and you get a dollar. That you know, what they've said to me is, you know, why am I getting hit with this, hit with this? Hasn't anybody thought about this to kind of try to, you know, level it out or something like that because, you know, um, so to that end, if you were asking me my opinion, I would prefer to go with the uh, borrowing of 58, 58 million um, with a 23% impact. Um, understanding that the market is volatile and, and nobody has a crystal ball, but for as long as I've been here, um, I can't recall a time we haven't had the best triple a bond rating. Um, I think, you know, with the, um, Mr. Pooler and the town manager and the treasurer's office, I really think we've had the expertise to stay ahead of a lot of the important money issues. And um, I don't need to, I don't think personally myself we need to borrow that bigger number. I'm, I'm trying to think back when um, financial decisions were made that, you know, really hurt the town. And I think better decisions could have been made by the, your then counterparts. Uh, a lot of it might be around, you know, retirement, which really had, wasn't under the control of um, people I'm talking to now, and then the Neswick, which was the whole thing in the past. So my personal preference, so I can say to people out on the street that are already saying, you know, you just did the 15% or whatever, you're on the water and in the sewer debt shift, those both got the exclusion of the Gibbs that got passed in Hardy and Thompson, the override that got passed in the exclusion for the high school, the reassessments that just hit, and I guess they won't hit again for 10 years. I think it would be nice if smarter minds than I agreed that we really try to minimize rising that bill even more and more and go maybe a little bit conservative with borrowing on the $58 million, my personal opinion. Mr. Dunn? Um. So just general principles first. So excited we're finally doing this. It is the right way for us to uh, pay for water and sewer. We should be paid, water and sewer should be paid by the amount that you're using it, not by what your real estate tax bill is. And with the change of the tax law, it just doesn't make any sense to do it. This is absolutely like just I know we all know this, but just reminding everybody mm -hmm. like why uh, we're doing it. Um, on the 58 versus 80, and the what about um, like separating the amount that we borrow from the amount that's on the debt shift. Uh, for instance, borrow more and then let some of it hit the tax rate and and thereby step the debt shift over a set of years? That That is possible. You could um, ease in the uh, reduction of the debt shift, or in other words, ease in the reduction of the tax subsidy that goes to the water and sewer department. Um, 
it's probably a little easier to do that if you borrow more money. Um, but it would be a decision of the, of the select board as to how much to recommend that MWRA debt shift. Um, again, right now, the taxpayers are subsidizing water and sewer to the uh, tune of almost $5.6 million. Um, you could ease that off in some phased way. Um, yeah. So, and if, I guess the, only, the, the I guess the concern is is that if we did it, if we did it ham-fisted, then we would actually have a year where we would have our tax rates going lower. But in that, I think we'd want to avoid. So, just in terms of feedback, my two cents is um, do it over three or four years, and uh, I defer to other to wisdom about. So, so in terms of the, the part that we actually control, like, like that we as a board control, to phase the shift over th uh, the, over three or four years. Um, and then in terms of like how much do we actually borrow, I would, um, I'm not, I don't feel particularly qualified to weigh in on that one and I'm, I'd let uh, you all decide that. Mr. Hurd. Just two quick thoughts. I'm in a business that closely tracks these rates so we can't sit here and tell when they're gonna go up, how quickly they're gonna go up, but I, I don't see them going down. So as far as, you know, sound, financial judgment on behalf of the town being able to make a decision on how much we borrow based on the fact that we're going to we have a low rate now we might not have it in a year from now i think that should certainly be a consideration and you know when we go back to constituents and residents and say the reason that we borrow more is because in the end i mean we all know what the price tag of the of the high school is going to be um we're going to have to spend the money we're going to have to borrow the money so if we can get it at a cheaper rate now to save money on the back end, I think it's certainly worth taking a look at that. And then just to echo what has been said, you know, the debt, I think it's a good idea at this time, just start to move away from the debt shift, but it should happen over some sort of an incremental pattern because res residents know that the tax increases are coming for the high school, for the override, they might not be so attuned as to what the debt shift is and what it means for their water bills. So I'd like to absorb some of that shock when they first get their water bill. So if we can do it over a few years, I think that would really help residents plan for it. Mr. DeCorsi and then Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with the, the, the comments of, of Mr. Dunn and, and Mr. Hurd. When we talked about this earlier in the year, we thought that there might even be another year before we were going out and issuing some bonds for, for the high school. So it might have been an opportunity to shift some of the 5.5 million in an interim period. Sounds like that's not really gonna, um, we're gonna have an opportunity to, to do that, which is okay I mean, because we're, we're in a good interest rate climate. So I think to the extent that we're borrowing money, whether it's 58 or 80 million, because I, I look at these as two separate questions with the 5.5, I think we have to go a little slower on the 5.5 because it's too much of a shock and then the next question becomes as you look forward, if, if you're borrowing 80 million that's gonna last you through the end of 2021, are you then going out issuing bonds in the first quarter of 2022 or, or would it be before then? And it, it seems like it would probably be even a greater amount than the 80 million given where we will be on the, on the high school project. I don't wanna alarm people, but that's probably where it's, where it's going. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Sure, that's a, that's a good observation. I think uh, one of the constraints we're working under is that we have a fairly accurate um, cash flow estimates now, both from Skanska, our owner's project manager, and from Consigli, the construction company. But those estimates really only go up through um, September of 21, uh, through the first phase uh, of construction. Uh, uh, that's as, as far as Consigli was willing to give us numbers. So that's one of the reasons that we took the, the numbers out that far. Um, yes, I mean, uh, so at some point, if we do a larger amount like 80, and we're going to then burn through our cash by, the, by um, say, August 21, we will have to have some strategy to borrow more money. In any case, we will be borrowing more money just because, as I said, there's a lot more money to be borrowed. The question then at that point will become whether we um, do something like a short-term ban just to tide us over to the next February or something, 
um, which can be an affordable way to do it, or internally borrow if we have the capacity to, if we have enough cash on hand that we don't actually have to go out and sell a bond. For a lot of projects that we do, smaller projects, we just do that as a matter of course. Um, so um, all those things will be things that we'll look at once we have better numbers from Consigli and Skanska on the cash flow for the rest of the project. Okay, and, and just one question on the new shift percentage. They, you use 47 and 23 just for, as an example. There's no reason why it couldn't be 23% on 58 million. It, it's really whatever we decide at, at, at some future date. That was yeah, that, this for just, illustration purposes this just what the shift could be. What, yeah, what, what, what the, the percent comes out to to exactly match the, the, the uh, debt service numbers that are associated with either uh, 58 <coughs> or $80 million. Right. That doesn't mean that you have to then do the whole shift. It just it was trying to match dollar for dollar as bills went up to the high school having, or, or bills went down to, to, for having less of a shift to match the amount that they were going up to pay for the high school, okay. try to keep them in balance. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, and, and so just, it's, they've taken up a lot of time, but I just, I, I was in support of this shifting, the, the, the burden back to, or off of the tax rate, if you will, and, and, and back to water and sewer rates, but at the same time, given where we may be, I think slower may be, may be better, um, but then, then, to really overwhelm people in the short term in terms of what that shift will be on, on, on to the rates. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna sound like the broken record here too. I mean, I think when we had this discussion previously, um, I think part of my understanding of it was that we would just hold off taking any action on the debt shift until we were starting to borrow for the high school, which I, I think that that's the proper and prudent course. But uh, I. I also have been a propon proponent of um, removing this shift, but I also I'd like to see a smoother curve. And I had always envisioned three to five years, d depending on how the, the numbers um, work out. I also think it's it's a tougher um, thing to explain to the the, um, the taxpayers, you know, why we're borrowing extra. I know that we're we're banking on on the interest rates staying low. But we are, we've been in an incredibly extended economic recovery and by my memory, I think, and by a lot of what I read, I mean, we're probably not seeing a big economic boom in the next next couple of years. And, and that's usually when you would see um, the, the interest rates um, go up a lot. So I would say it's a fair gamble that they're gonna stay, stay steady or, or, or go down. But who knows? I'm not on Wall Street either. We're all in this room. Um, so, I mean, I think that's kind of where I'm at. I'd, I'd like to see kind of a three to five year roll off of the of the, um, the, the the debt shift, but to commence at the time that we're, we're commencing borrowing as close as possible. Okay. So if, I, if I could attempt to synthesize what I've heard from the board, which is somewhat conflicting among each of the five of you. I think the consistent point is, I'm hearing, is giving us a, giving the board a three to five year opportunity to phase out the debt shift as the priority. If there is prudence in borrowing a slightly larger amount to achieve the lower interest rate, that's of interest, but making sure that our strategy best allows us mm -hmm. to, or best positions the board to be able to phase off the debt shift over three to five years is what the board would like to see. So whether it's 58, 80, or number in between, the priority is that phasing ability. So I think we can look at the schedule, mm -hmm. what that first borrowing is when we think the second borrowing might need to be after that, what that means for debt that would be rolling on year over year and see how that would map out with a three to five year plan for the shift. And then come back in a couple weeks when we're actually looking to sell the debt and have that number for the board's action. Sounds that like sound a plan. Good. All right. Okay. Since there's really no vote on this, unless you no, need a vote. Was, okay. No, just for discussion. Over seat. Move receipt by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Second. Mr. Hurd. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Correspondence received. Move receipt by So moved. Mr. Dunn, seconded Second. by Second. Refer uh, Wellesley Road to TAC. Is that who our guests are? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you, are you here? Oh, okay. Um, you got to change the letter. I didn't know they were coming in. Okay. 
Oh, no. Um, if, if you want to come up and give a, a quick speech, but what correspondents received is we're, we're officially receiving the communication tonight. And then we just, I anticipate we'll vote to send it to our Transportation Advisory Committee, TAC, because that's the group that has expertise um, to look at this, go out and take traffic counts, talk to um, people who are asking this to get anecdotal history, things like that. Then when all that process, and, and or anything else, the police department may also say, you know, there's something we'd like to suggest or not. And then when all that happens, then it comes before the board and we put it on as an agenda item and then have a discussion about that. But since you've been here all night, um, it's a little different. If you, if you want to come up, each of you, for like a minute or so, and um, I feel bad making you sit through this whole thing, and we're going to have to fix that letter that goes out. Um, so do you want to just come up and give your name and address for the record and whatever mocks brief or, or maybe not so brief that you want to give, recognizing this, we can't discuss it tonight and make any action until it goes through. This is like the first step, but I'd like to hear at least something from each of you since you were here all night. I feel terrible. I apologize. Just name and address for the record. Joe Garnelli, 2 Wellesley Road, and the families of Wellesley Road have identified a safety issue. So Regis Street next to us is a private street. So no traffic going to school goes on that street. And we have no sidewalks. There's people walking, people driving bikes, and people parked on the street because they can't park near the school, so they park on our street. And we just have so much traffic on there, it's, it's a safety issue for the kids, parents walking their kids to school. And uh, I mean, she can speak to what happened to her husband. Hi, thanks for hanging in there, sorry. Thank you for letting us speak tonight. Wanna to just pull the microphone yeah, right there? It's not Thank really. You. Sorry. Uh, my name is Maurice Canale Young. I'm at 10 Wellesley Road, and I'm here uh, on behalf of myself, my husband, Peter Young, um, and I have two kids who attend the Thompson School, uh, Brennan's in kindergarten, and Nathaniel is in fourth grade. Um, as Joe mentioned, the traffic patterns on our street, um, particularly at morning rush hour, um, are dangerous for pedestrians. Um, last winter, when my husband was coming back from walking my oldest to school, um, as he was walking down the road, he was clipped by somebody's side mirror while um, walking down the street. He was fine, but it, it really is, is dangerous, um, particularly when there's any sort of weather involved. It, it, most of the people who typically walk end up driving, and so you end up with a huge influx of traffics, uh, uh, traffic all throughout the area. Um, when there's any sort of snow, um, it's particularly dangerous because there are no sidewalks. And so um, we're hoping that the road could be evaluated potentially to maybe become either a one-way all at all times or a one-way during um, rush hour. There's no stop sign at the end of the road as well. And so it's an assumed stop sign, but not everybody assumes that that's a stop sign, and so that's a piece that's of concern as well. So thank you for considering it. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, move that we refer to the Transportation Advisory Committee for consideration and study. Second. Uh, so for, uh, moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd, which also includes the stop sign issue that was raised. Yeah, they have just... Yes, passed Is that in there? Because I just pulled it up real yep, quick. I think it's right. um, did either of the other two or three want to speak? Oh, no, if you haven't had a chance. I just feel bad that you're here. we got to write, change that letter. It just doesn't say you're invited to come. Oh, okay. okay. Just name and address for the record. Sure. Charlie North here, 19 Wellesley Road. Um, just on top of what they've said, it's really a uh, combination of factors that lead to the uh, the safety impact that we feel that we have as as residents um, for the commuters, as well as for the kids who are trying to get to the school and out of the school. And so the measure in which we've put forth is, is potentially um, to be reviewed as a, a one-way street during a particular time. You know, we're open as a community to see what sort of safety measures can be brought to bear to, you know, to allow both, to allow whatever use needs to be put. But it is a very heavily dense road without um, appropriate safety measures, no signs. No strong signage for school. There's a uh, 
school end sign, but no school begins sign. Uh, there's no stop sign that's been mentioned at the end of the street. Heavy volume of traffic and people do park on both sides of the street, which really makes it narrow. Without the sidewalks, the kids and parents are walking in the street. And because people are trying to cut the light off of River Street, they're going through the community as commuters to get to work during that busy time as well. And they're not always um, mindful of it being a school zone with a lot of kids around at that time. So okay. it's just the combination. All right. So, um, okay, one more. <laughs> this is a little out of form. And usually this doesn't happen because that's Joe else Marinelli, like uh, 124 Winchester Road. Uh, I used to walk to Crosby School in the 60s. Three parents <laughs> drove their kids to school. My children grew up uh, near Stratton. There was a few more cars. Uh, the roads near Stratton have now been made one way because there are a lot of cars. So the town has changed and I'm here as a citizen for uh, probably 50 years. I'm, I'm not that good in math, but I've been here a while. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we're just very limited very, very because we're, it's not an agenda item. Right, no, we shouldn't even be discussed. Just, just for clarification, I know we're doing oh, this as a referral. Um, I see in the petition that it, you're asking just between seven and nine. Do you have the same issues at the end of the school day? That's not as much. Okay. Right, we're really not supposed to do that. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right, all right. But, but this will be on a future agenda, and then we'll answer everything, and you can ask everything. It's just this. But I feel bad that you've been there all night. So. Um, so, um, on a, was the motion by Mr. Dunn seconded by Mr. Hurd to move receipt and refer this petition to yes. Transportation Advisory Committee? Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous votes. I move receipt and we'll the, see you soon. I move receipt of the other piece of correspondence. Oh, I thought we did. Okay, move receipt by Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, uh, move receipt, uh, agenda item 16. Any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka. Nothing. Attorney Heim. Nothing, thank you. Town Manager Chapelain. New business. All talked it out? Talked out. <laughs> I'm not yet. Mr. Uh, DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple of pieces. Um, first, this Friday night, is the AYCC, the Arlington Youth Counseling Center Gala, downstairs at the Town Hall. And um, this year, they are honoring Carly Newell, who uh, was, uh, thousands of, of children in town know as the cigarette lady. She works in the health and wellness uh, department uh, in, in the public schools. She's gonna be honored. It's a, uh, a big fundraiser for the great work that AYCC does. Um, and uh, I know there are, there, there are still plenty of tickets left, so that's Friday evening. The second thing I wanted to congratulate, I know we all do, um, Lauren uh, Sweetser from our office, who is now Lauren Costa. Um, she married Michael Costa earlier this month, and um, just want to wish them both congratulations on their wedding. And, um, and um, for those who are looking on the website, we don't have a new employee. We just, <laughs> <laughs> Lauren was quick to change her life. The, the, the name on the website. So congratulations to Lauren and Michael. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Nothing. Mr. Hurd. Just want to congratulate and thanks, thank everyone that put on the spooky walk at Menani Rocks Park on Saturday. I actually wasn't in attendance, but my boys did and with my parents. And they said it was a great event. I, I don't know if it was the first one, but they, uh, they were sold. So. Mr. Kerr. Oh, just, just one other piece of congratulations. I noticed on the uh, Twitter feed that our animal control officer, uh, Diane Welsh, was uh, recognized as the animal control officer of the year for the state. And so that's, um, that's really fabulous news and uh, a great testimony to the work that she's done. That also was my um, new business because oh, that's quite, no, 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 but I, I, now I think I, you'll agree with me. I, I would ask the um, town manager to talk to Acting Chief Julie Flaherty. I was feeling like we should maybe recognize her and yeah, have her maybe. come in before the board. Um, but if there's also something else um, being formalized um, to honor 
that recognition that should happen before she appears before us. I don't want to do anything out of turn. So I, if you I think the banquet from the association was just this past Friday right. evening. So I think the, the official stuff has happened. She can come before the board and okay. sure she'll be happy to receive. So um, Mr. Kiro and I will, but will work with you um, contacting Animal Control Officer Diane Welch, maybe give her the next two um, select board meetings and see if one, with the understanding she'd be right at the top of the agenda because she's literally is like a lot of our employees, but 24-7. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been down the yard at, at a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock when you go way in the back where all the front of the plows are yeah. until they are needed from winter. So everyone knows you can go down there and find her even though it's not Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. So, uh, Tony Heim? No, no. Oh, I thought I saw you. Uh, if that, I will take a motion to adjourn by oh, Mr. Carroll. Uh, Procedural question. Sure. Uh, Steve Moore, 64 Piedmont Street. If I've got a comment or a question that comes uh, about after the open forum part, how do I pose that in a timely fashion? You don't. We, we're really limited by what's on the agenda for, to, right. for a discussion. We have the Citizens Open Forum, right. and when that's closed, the next opportunity is the next meeting with Citizens Open Forum. Or if you want to, you know, send an email. Um, but we don't do this. Back and forth. Yeah. Would it make sense to have the Citizens Citizens Open Forum at the end of the meeting then? No, because then citizens kind of feel like we're torturing them to stay to the very end of the meeting, and it's, we're psychologically trying to get it so they say, the heck with this, we're going to go home. So I try to get that early. What I try to do with the agenda is, um, which is why I asked Mr. Chapdelaine, like in the beginning up to Citizens Open Forum, try to get the citizens coming in and, and groups like that, and then Citizens Open Forum from citizens who didn't appear on agenda item. And then the remaining agenda items are usually stuff that unless you really want to be here you know our business so we wait to the end so um thank you uh on a motion by i missed it was it mr Carol. mr carroll seconded. seconded by mr hurd to adjourn all those in favor say aye. aye all those opposed unanimous vote good night and thank you thank you acmi